Hi everybody, I'm attorney Aiden Kramer with the Law Office of Aiden Kramer in Colorado. Welcome to the magical world of all up in your business. I've talked a lot in previous episodes about the importance of an operating agreement in an LLC, particularly in a single member LLC. The operating agreement for an LLC is essentially the written agreement of the members about how to operate the LLC. So it may seem odd for a single member LLC to have an operating agreement because it's not like there's going to be any votes. The single member is not going to disagree with anybody. The single member can, for the most part, do whatever they want with the company. But an operating agreement nonetheless is very, very important in a single member LLC. Now, Colorado doesn't require an operating agreement for single member LLCs or for any LLCs for that matter, but some states do require them. And even if it's not required, it's still an important piece of paperwork to have for your LLC. In a single member LLC, the primary purpose of the operating agreement is to help uphold the limited liability that an LLC provides. The operating agreement helps to avoid piercing the corporate veil, which I've talked about in previous episodes. So what I'm going to do today is walk through a sample operating agreement so you guys know some of the important points that should be made in your single member LLC's operating agreement. First, let's start with the basics. Your operating agreement should include your business's name, the address of the business, the registered agent's information, and the business purpose. All of this information should also be reflected on the articles of organization that were filed to create the LLC. And the business purpose is the purpose of the business. What kind of a business are you going to be operating? What are you going to be doing? My operating agreement, for example, would say that I'm going to be operating a law practice focusing on business transactions and estate planning. So whatever the purpose, whatever you're going to be doing in your business, that's what your business purpose is. Your operating agreement should also reflect whether the LLC is going to be member managed or manager managed. If you're unsure about which one your LLC is or what it should be, check back to my previous videos because I have one explaining the difference between member and manager managed LLCs. The operating agreement should also include information about the owners or the members of the LLC and the percentage breakdown for each one. Obviously, since you're the only member in it, you own 100% but your operating agreement should reflect that you are 100% owner of the LLC. You also want to include information about how the LLC is going to be taxed. Are you going to leave it as a disregarded entity or are you going to elect to be taxed as an S corporation or a C corporation? Whatever you decide should be in the operating agreement. Your operating agreement should also include information about the contributions that you've made to the LLC if you contributed a lump sum of cash, or if you're just contributing services and your own knowledge, your operating agreement should reflect whatever your contributions are. You'll wanna put information in your operating agreement about distributions. How are you going to take distributions? Are you going to take a lump sum distribution on a regular schedule, weekly, monthly, quarterly? Are you gonna take it whenever you decide to in a certain amount? The terms of how you're going to take those distributions should be stated in your operating agreement. Your operating agreement should also state if certain actions taken by the LLC need to be consented to in writing by you, the member. States may require a written consent to certain actions. They may not, but you can specify in your operating agreement what types of transactions, what types of purchases, what types of actions need to be consented to by you in writing. You also want to include information about meetings of the members. You're the only member, so you can hold a meeting really whenever you want, but if you want to commit to having annual meetings by yourself, you can put that in the operating agreement, or you can state in the operating agreement that anything that could be done in a meeting can be done in a writing in lieu of a meeting. Whatever you decide should be stated, though, in your operating agreement liquidation and dissolution of the LLC should also be addressed in the operating agreement. 
when can you dissolve the LLC if you decide to do so, what steps need to be taken when you do dissolve and unwind the LLC. All of those steps, all of those requirements that you may impose on yourself or that your state may impose on you should be included in the operating agreement. You also want to address what will happen if you decide to transfer ownership of the LLC, either partial or complete ownership. So if you later decide to take on a business partner and you want to make that business partner a 50% owner, your operating agreement should describe under what circumstances you can transfer that ownership, what steps need to be taken to do that, and anything else regarding transferring the ownership of membership interests in the LLC. And finally, your operating agreement should state how the operating agreement can be amended. If later on down the road you want to change some of these terms that you've written into your operating agreement, your operating agreement should say how you make those amendments. Obviously, you're the only owner, so you can decide on your own without talking to anybody else that you want to amend it. But if your operating agreement states that you need to consent to amending it in writing, then you need to do that before amending the operating agreement. Now, those are certainly not all of the things that need to be included in your single member operating agreement. Those are just a few of the more important things that are typically a part of the operating agreement. There are a lot of sample operating agreements available online. I don't recommend that the, you use them just as a complete template, but they can help to be a starting point in drafting your operating agreement. But of course, as always, I recommend working with an attorney to do it so you know that everything's been covered and that your operating agreement is in compliance with state law if your state does have requirements for an operating agreement. If you're in Colorado and you would like help with your operating agreement or anything else regarding your business, you can contact me. My phone number and email are below. Thank you all for watching. I'm Aiden Kramer and I will see you next time.